Welcome back to Pocket Rock. Hey, where are you going? It's just math. Don't run away. Hey, hey. Oh, well. Okay, we're still working on doing volume. Remember, volume is 3D objects, and when you're dealing, when you're calculating volume, your units are cubic units, cubic feet, cubic meters, cubic inches. They're cubic. Okay, we're looking at 15d1. It's a pyramid with a square base because it's six and a half by six and a half. Okay, so the first thing I want to tell you, if you want to add this to your formula card, that the volume, the volume of a pyramid is one-third the length times the width times the height. Okay, remember area is, a volume is the area of the base times the height. This is the area of the base, is your length times width, and then you're going to do one-third the height. Where this comes from, remember the volume of a box is length times width times height. Okay, if you have a a box or a cube. Okay, let's say here you have a box or a cube and you're only going to take a third of that. If you can chop off part of this and then turn it into like a pyramid, that's where that formula comes from. It's one third the volume of a box. I just want to show you where that formula comes from. On a pyramid, I want to remind you there are two things on a pyramid that you need to be aware of. Looking at this picture, this is the altitude. The altitude comes straight from the vertex and goes down and is perpendicular to the base. Okay, that is one thing. The slant height is the height of one of the faces of the triangle. This right here is a slant height. This is the altitude. When you are doing the volume of a pyramid, you want the altitude. Your altitude is what you're going to use for the height of the pyramid. Okay, the actual technical word is the altitude, but we still use the term height in the formula. Okay, with this problem, instead of using fractions, I'm going to turn these into decimals. So, six and a half is the same thing as 6.5. So, anytime that there's a fraction, I'm just going to turn it into a decimal. Three and a half for my altitude is 3.5. Now, I can take these numbers and put them into my formula for the volume. So, the volume is one-third, the length of the base, 6.5, the width of the base, 6.5, and then my height or the altitude of my pyramid is 3.5. Okay, if you also want to think of this as length times width times height divided by 3, same thing. Because remember, all of these numbers can be turned into a fraction by putting them over 1. So I'm going to multiply 6.5 times 6.5 times 3.5 and then divide by 3. So, I'm doing that on my calculator. 6.5 times 6.5 times 3.5 is 147.875, and then dividing that by 3, there's my one third, and that will equal, rounding it to just two decimal places, is 49.29 cubic meters. And that's the volume of that pyramid. Uh, that was 15D1. Okay, looking at the problem in 15E3, you have this picture right there. Basically, what I want you to know is that if you want to find the volume of that, remember volume is what fits on the inside. You separate it into two different figures. You have a pyramid, pyramid plus a box. So, find the volume of the pyramid then calculate the volume of the box, then add those two together. So you have that volume plus that volume, and that would be your total volume. Okay, looking at 15D2, cone, ice cream cone. The volume of a cone is one-third the volume of a cylinder. Pi r square h, that comes from the volume of a cylinder, and you're going to take one-third of that. So what happens is you have a cylinder like this, and then you're going to chop part of it off. You don't want that part. So you take the volume of a cylinder, divide it by three. 
you want one third the volume of a cylinder. That's where that formula comes from. So a cone, we need, always make sure you're given the radius. Here we are, if it's the diameter, make sure and cut it in half, but on this one we're given the radius. So one third pi, I'm going to go ahead and use 3.14, r squared, my radius is 3.4 squared times the height of my cylinder, 7.6. Order of operation says to do exponents first, okay? Remember, if you want to think of these as all over 1, because at the end you can divide by 3. So, I'm just going to go ahead and do my exponents first. There's my 3.14, then 3.4 squared is 11.56, 7.6, and there's my dividing by 3 for my cone. So, Multiplying everything in the numerator should be 275.868, I'm rounding to three decimals all, divided by three, so and then divide that by three, 91.96 cubic inches, that should be your volume. Look at 15D3. You have this figure right here. What I want you to know is that this is a cone and a cylinder. Take the volume of a cone, take the volume of the cylinder and add the two together. The one thing that I want you to know, this is the radius. The radius for the cone is going to be the same as the radius for the cylinder. The radius is, the radii are the same. So whatever the radius is, that's the radius for the cylinder, but it's also the for the cylinder, then it's also the radius for the cone. So take the volume of the cone plus the volume of the cylinder, and that will be your total volume. Okay, now we're doing the volume of a prism. This figure right here in 15E1, this is a prism. Remember, the general formula for volume is the area of the base, this capital B stands for area of the base, times the height. So we have to look at this prism and decide what is the base. This triangle right here is the base. On a prism, there are two triangles that are uh, parallel to each other and they are congruent. These sides on a prism are called the lateral surfaces. Okay, Lateral. Remember, lateral means side. So on a prism, the lateral surfaces are parallelograms. Parallelograms, okay? So the base is the triangle. So you have a triangle base times the height. So you want the area of the base, which is a triangle base, times the height. So the formula, the way that I write it for a prism, you might see it written some other way. The area of the base, which is a triangle, the area of a triangle is base times height divided by two. That's the area of a triangle. That's your triangle base. Then you multiply it by the height of the prism. This is the height for the prism, okay? This H is the height of the triangle because this is the area of the triangle base. Okay. So if we do this, then we want the base of the triangle right here, this B right here, that's this right here, which is 4.5. Then times the height of the triangle, which is 4.2. Divide that by 2 because you take the area of the triangle, the area of this triangle, which is the base of the prism. Then we multiply it by the height of the prism, which is 11 millimeters. Order of operation says do everything in the parentheses first, or in this case, brackets. So I'm going to multiply my 4.5 times my 4.2. Now divide by 2. Everything in the bracket came out to 9.45. Now I multiply the by that by the height of my prism. And that came out to 103.5. 95 millimeters cubed, cubic millimeters. That is the volume for the prism. Now look at 15C3. 
You have this figure right here. It looks like a house. You're wanting the volume. So you need to break this up into two different figures. Okay, down here I have a box. That's easy to see. This up here is a prism. Don't forget, the base of the prism is the triangle. Okay, it looks like a tent. This long rectangular bottom is not the base. The triangle side is the base of the prism. So my recommendation is to find the volume of each one. Finding the volume of the box. Volume of the box is just length times width times height. Okay, if I do the length times the width times the height, that's 5 times 6 times 2. So the volume of the box, 5 times 6 is 30. 30 times 2 is 60. So the volume of the box is 60 cubic feet. Okay, now let's find the volume of the prism. I'm going to do this out here to the side. Remember the volume of any general shape is the area of the base times the height. But remember, the base of a prism is the triangle. So I need to take the area of the triangle, that's the area of the triangle, times the height of the prism. So let's do the area of the triangle first. Okay, the base of my triangle here is 5 feet. That's that distance. The height of my triangle, 4 feet. Divide that by 2. I'm going to put that in brackets. I need to do that first. Then the height of my prism. Okay? This is the height of my prism. The length. You can, you can also think of it as the length of your prism. The height or the length. This distance here is the height or the length of my prism, which is 6 feet. That's going to be the same as this. So that's 6 feet. Let's do everything in the brackets first. 5 times 4 is 20. 20 divided by 2 is... 10, and then times the height of your prism, 10 times 6, 60, and that would be cubic feet. So the volume of your prism is 60 cubic feet. Not done there. So you take, because we want the total volume of the prism plus the box, so doing the prism plus the box. The prism was 60 cubic feet. The box was also 60 cubic feet. So the total volume, you can do it like this, the total volume was 120 cubic feet, adding those together. Okay, let's look at 15E2. Okay. You can't tell by my picture, so I'm telling you it's a sphere. I cannot draw a 3D circle. I cannot draw a ball or a basketball. I could. It won't be as pretty. So I'm just telling you this is a sphere with a radius of 1.5 centimeters. Okay. The formula for the volume of a sphere. For a sphere, the formula is 4 thirds pi r cubed. This is very important. So far with our volumes and with areas, we've mostly been working with R squared. With a sphere, you want R cubed. We have a fraction in front. If I want to put all of this over 1, then I can rewrite this to where my 4 is in my numerator, and so is my pi, and so is my R cubed all over 3, if you want to write it that way. Either way is fine. So the only thing that we need to know to find the volume of a sphere is my radius. And I know our radius is 1.5. I'm going to use this format. 4 pi, we're going to use 3.14. My radius is 1.5, but I need to cube that all over 3. Order of operations say to do exponents first. Make sure you cube it. That is not 1.5 times 3. It is 1.5 times 1.5 times 1.5. Just to rewrite it, that's 3.14, 1.5 cubed is 3.375, all over 3. Now I'm going to take my 3.375 times my 3.14 times 4, that was 42.39, divide that by 3, 
and that came out to 14.13 centimeters cubed, cubic centimeters, because we're dealing with volume, so we need to have cubic units.